Gospel. Gospel means good news, good tidings. I have very good news for you people, whoever you are. You might be already involved in some religion, some denomination, or you might be an atheist, or you might be a religious person of some other religion. I have very good news for you. From the King James Bible, First Timothy, chapter 1, chapter 2, <laughs> verse 1. Our Apostle Paul wrote, I exhort, therefore, the first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So we should be praying for all men. Supplications, prayers, intercession. These are forms of prayers. In our communication with our Heavenly Father. So we have an exhortation, the first of all, very, very important. And I'm realizing myself even now. The supplications, prayers, intercessions, a giving of thanks. Giving your thanks, not forget about this. Be thankful. Giving your thanks. Be made for all men. Thank you, Lord. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we might lead a quiet and peaceful life, you know, godliness and honesty. I know that it can be tough because if you have different uh, political op opinions, ideas, position, you might say, I don't know if I want to pray for this and that. Hey, this is the word of God. Forget about you in the flesh. You as a, an ambassador for Christ, as a member of the body of Christ, you don't exist anymore in the flesh. You exist in Christ. Christ is in you. The Spirit of Christ is in you. So, this is the will of God, our Holy Father. And believe me, I'm talking to myself first. My nature, politically speaking, is quite rebellious. And, okay, you know, especially when I know what is behind. But the reality is, God says, that's not like your business. I want you to pray. For kings, and for all that are in authority, the we, the body of Christ, the believers, may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good. Please notice. For this is good. You want something good? Well, this is good. And acceptable, it's not going to reject it, in the sight of God our Savior. God is our Savior. Jesus Christ is God. Holy God, fully man. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. Step number one. I told you I could i got very good news for you tonight. God will have all men to be saved. Which means, until you believe, you're not saved. Believe what? The Gospel of Christ. What? The Gospel of Christ. No any Gospel... Any gospel won't do. You might know all about Moses, the Ten Commandments, the crossing of the Red Sea, Joseph. All this stuff is true. You, you, you might know the prophets inside out. You might know the red letters, the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Hebrews. You might know very well the book of Revelation. But my question is, have you believed once 
once the gospel of the cross. Oh, you just uh, generically say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Oh, of course, I believe that Jesus exists. Uh, I believe that Jesus is God. Yeah, that's good. But the question is, have you believed the gospel of the cross? Because God will have all men to be saved. That includes you. And to come unto the knowledge of truth. How do, what, what does it mean to get saved? How do I get saved? Saved from what? People say saved. What does it mean? <sighs> okay, let's go for, for, in order. The scripture says in Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned, all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. That excludes none. Everybody, starting with me, okay? In the flesh, in Adam, as we are born in Adam in this world, we are sinners. And if we stay in that condition, there is no hope for us. It doesn't matter how much you pray. It doesn't matter how much you do some ritual practices. It doesn't even matter you read the Bible. The number one thing is very important. Once you understand you are a sinner, you are in dire straits, you are a, a child of wrath, a child of disobedience, in other words. You are dead in trespasses and sins. Hmm? You are an ungodly sinner, an enemy of God in the flesh, in other. And you need Christ to save you. And you know how Christ saves you? The moment you hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, which is how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You find this glorious gospel in the book of First Corinthians. In chapter 15, from verse 1 to 4, and these verses are just quoted, will be 3 and 4. So God wants you saved. It's up to you now to simply believe. No prayers, no words, no confession of sins. You don't need to convince God. He knows already. Just believe. And receive in your heart by faith, no works, how that Christ died for our sins, which means for your sins, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. When you believe this, without you feeling anything, Seeing anything, hearing anything, touching anything outside of your senses is an operation of the Spirit of God. God saves you and the Holy Spirit of God seals you into Christ. And once you are sealed in Christ, you are eternally saved. Because what God does, He takes you. He takes you. No priests, no pope, no pastors. He hears your prayer. Because you believe it's a prayer. You believe how the Christ died for your sins. So you say, yeah, for my sins. For my sins. 
Then he was buried. He rose again the third day. For my justification, it's written. You believe this? God takes you out of Adam and puts you into Christ. By the power of his spirit, you are now a member of the new creature, the body of Christ. Where Christ is the head, and you are a member in particular. The Holy Spirit, after you hear the, the, after you hear the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the perishable possession unto the praise of his glory. My friend, the salvation of your soul is the operation of God. You can participate with your works. You believe God. You believe Jesus. You believe the Holy Ghost. You believe that God saves you and God seals you. At this point, who will have all men to be saved? You're going to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. He's given you a book, the Bible, not for you to contend, debate, and go around bashing people with the Bible, but to know the truth. The truth is the Lord Jesus Christ and His glorious gospel and His will in time past, in the but now, in the ages to come. You will understand, you will know when you will study the word of truth, rightly dividing it. In the book of 2 Timothy, in chapter 2, verse 15, is written, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman, then is not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, for well, this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So the Holy Ghost of God introduces now, presents you, Christ as the man who is God. Christ is God incarnated. But as a mediator is the man between you, man, and God. Because he's also God. So it's the God between. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself, it's not asking anything of you, who gave himself. Understand this. This is not pieties, mystical experiences. This is the reality. This is the truth of the word of God, who gave himself a ransom for all. You know what I mean, ransom? The price to be redeemed. And he shed his precious blood to atone for our sins, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Because when this happened, nobody understood what was happening. But now it's testified by the Apostle Paul. Whereunto I am ordained, so he didn't make himself one, a preacher and an apostle. In, in brackets, I speak the truth in, in, in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. My dear friends, you need salvation. You need more than the money in the bank, more than the air that you breathe, more 
the bread you eat, I don't know, more than anything else. Understand that this is essential. You need to believe this. You need salvation. God wants you saved and he gives you the apostle that tells you how to be saved. Here, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 onwards. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, good news, which I preached unto you. Notice, the Lord gave to Paul, not the twelve, they have another gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. He, Jesus didn't preach this in the days of his flesh. He preached the gospel of the kingdom to Israel, to the Lord's sheep of the eyes of Israel, Matthew 15, 24. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved. It doesn't say you're getting saved, you have been saved, you're not under probation. Salvation is immediate and forever. In fact, it says, if you keep remembering what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. If you believe another gospel, or add works, prayers, whether baptisms, confession of sins, you have believed in vain because you make the cross of Christ of none effect with your vain dead works. <laughs> For I deliver unto you. Okay? First of all, you see, priority number one. How, sorry, first of all, that which I also received. So Paul received this from Christ, from heaven. How did Christ die for our sins? According to the scriptures. So he doesn't want you to die for your sins. You can't do that. And even if you do, you go to hell. Okay? How did Christ die for our sins? He died for our sins. That's what God accepts. According to the scriptures. His only begotten Son of God is the beloved. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Remember what I told you before. By which also you are saved. You believe this. Death of Christ for your sins. Burial of Christ for your sins. Resurrection of Christ for your justification. This is the most important thing that you need to know. After that, you can study the word, the truth, rather than divided. Because then, when the Holy Spirit enters in you, <clears throat> this is the word of truth, the Holy Spirit will open this word, as it did with me and many and many other brothers. That we should be to the praise of His glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted, believed, trusted, put confidence, after you heard the word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest, down payment, the assurance of our inheritance until the redemption of the price of, of the first possession unto the praise of his glory. We are saved and sealed until the day we finally meet the Lord in the air and go with him in heavenly places in Christ, in a new glorified body. This is the most important thing you need to know. Please, my dear friend, believe and receive this glorious gospel. This video is here. I'm here more than happy, for free, just I'm going to say because some people sell books, send me money, for free, if I can, with the scriptures, give you other verses, other passages to help you, to understand, because God wants to say, I'm a simple ambassador for Christ, nothing, not, nothing, it's not, it's not me, it's the word of God. Is the word of the Lord are the pure words of God. 
receive please the gospel of your salvation paul said in the same book of corinthians chapter one Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel no way wisdom or words lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect the preaching of the cross is to them the perish foolishness but unto us which are saved is the power of God do you really want the power of God not to go around to explore the power of God to save you is in the cross of Christ because he died for your sins he opened the way for you to have fellowship with God immediately and to be adopted by by the father to the father as a child adopted by Jesus Christ please my friend The Lord wants you saved. We preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Be saved, be sealed, give glory to God. He's the only one who deserves it. Grace and peace to all.